Hi everyone! Happy Wednesday! I'm on a bit of a watercolor ground kick these last few weeks, so I'm going to be working with that again this week. But I will not be using as much as I usually do, and so if you were hoping to create a painting that was more focused on watercolors, this is probably going to be the painting. Um, because even though I will be using some watercolor ground, it won't be the focus of my video and there will only be a little bit of it in my painting. But I'm trying to play with different ways of applying it and so I've created this little cone that I'm going to put my watercolor ground in and use it to apply it. Before adding paint to my paper, I'm going to let the watercolor ground dry completely and then I'll be ready to start adding color. I've never tried painting with the watercolor ground wet, but I don't anticipate that it would do anything that I really want it to do at this point. Though, as you know, I may at some point exper experiment with that as well. <laughs> I'm coming in with my flat brush here just to add some water on top of my paper to help the paint flow a little bit better once I start adding it. And this will just help to move the paint over the paper um, more easily, I guess. Most of the time when I'm painting, I am also experimenting. I'm trying to do things that I haven't done before to see how they will work out. And so I can learn how to use both my tools and my paints in different ways and uh, just get more familiar and comfortable with them. And so I pulled out my Van Dyke Brown and my Cobalt Teal Light and I'm going to be starting my painting off with just these two colors. I thought it might be interesting to see how the Van Dyke Brown and the Cobalt Teal would blend together. So that's why I'm just starting out with these two colors. It may be 
it may very well be <laughs> that that will change as I go along uh, depending on what happens when I first try it out so it's all about following my intuition seeing where things will go as I'm going along discovering what it is I like about what what's happening with my supplies and what I like less and helping me sort of figure out what I'm going to do next. Actually really like how these two colors have blended together to sort of make the cobalt turquoise or cobalt teal light um, a little bit more neutral and slightly more green if you will um, I like that I like the the combination of these two colors my intention is to use the cobalt teal alone at the top and I'm not 100% sure at this point, just looking at this, if it's going to sit well with me to do that. Um, because this looks more earthy and natural. I think the cobalt teal light on its own might be a little bit too bright, but we'll see. So yes, as predicted, because this color is so bright and beautiful, it is a lot brighter than I was hoping it would turn out. And maybe I could have made it less bright by adding more water to my pigment and really going with a super light wash, which is not what I did. So I'm not 100% sure that I want to keep what's underneath it as is. I do like bright colors. And even though I do love the earthiness of the two colors below, I feel like I'm going to need to do something a little bit different just to brighten things up because that bright color is sort of almost shocking. You know, it's, it, it doesn't seem to sit well with the other two colors on the bottom. Now that my paint is dry on the paper, I'm liking it even less than I thought I would like like it. Um, it's, it's not bad. Uh, I think it's a, a nice combination of colors. I would work with the cobalt teal light with the Van Dyke Brown again. I don't know that I want it, um, that I would do it again for what I was hoping to achieve. And that's okay. That's a big part of why I'm experimenting and trying things is so that I can learn as I'm going along. So I'm going to start to intensify the colors and I'm probably going to change them as I'm going along. In here, I'm going to work on maybe darkening a little bit of that Van Dyke Brown just to create some more color contrast. I've also pulled out my green gold, which is a color that's very bright and beautiful. And I'm going to try to figure out where I can use that one as well. And I'm sort of feeling like this little painting is going to turn into an abstract landscape. But I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm always leaving room for something to change. And that's a, it's important for me, I guess, to remain flexible so that when my little intuitive nudges come, I feel free to move along with them because I don't feel so stuck in having to achieve a certain result. So this may become uh, <laughs> an abstract landscape. It may also become something else. I will see as I go along.
For the top part of my painting to mix with that cobalt teal light, I have pulled out a color called Blackberry from my Decadent Pies um, set. It's a color that I really love and in fact in my first uh, set that's the the first color well after the gold it was the first color to go <laughs> i used it up so, uh, so quickly because i love it so much uh, and it's a beautiful dark blue um, that wears its color really well and so i'm gonna add it to the cobalt teal light and see what i can do as i add this color In the middle section of my painting is where I've decided I'm going to bring some of that green gold in to the painting. Uh, since I am sort of working loosely with the idea that this could become a landscape, an abstract landscape, I thought maybe, you know, add a little bit of green to the center part of the painting. I also want to brighten up that section because the blue up above is a lot brighter and I feel like it, it needs something to sort of balance that out. Now, this green is very bright. <laughs> so I will probably now have to add something to the bottom part of the painting in order to make everything a little bit more cohesive and not make it feel like the bottom part of the painting is like uh, an eyesore because it doesn't seem to fit with everything else, all those bright colors on top. But I do love that green. I'm going to stand by it. And, you know, I'm experimenting. I'm trying things. I'm going with a light wash in this section because I do like what's underneath. And I don't want to completely cover it. But, um, yeah, I think this green gold is a good addition to this section of the painting. As with a lot, if not most of my painting projects, this painting is going to go through a few different phases. Phases where I'm actually really liking what I'm seeing and then phases where I'm sort of second guessing or feel unsure of what is going on on the paper. And it's all a part, a normal part of the painting process, of any painting process. Until a painting is complete, it's impossible to actually know 100% for sure if one little step was the exact right step to take. The important thing to remember is that as long as you don't let it be your final step, you can always work through whatever it is that's going on on your paper. And so I'm sticking with it. I'm not 100% sure at this point. I'm kind of wondering if I'm going in the right direction, but again, I'm experimenting and playing and as I'm going along I'm learning a lot about my paints, I'm learning a lot about my paper, I'm learning a lot about how I'm applying my paint and what I will want to do in the future and what I may not want to repeat again in the future. And those are all really key to building our skills and developing ourselves as artists. In this part of the painting where I initially put the watercolor ground, I'm adding some quinacridone deep gold 
because those colors in the middle are bright and I think the that the richness of the quinacridone deep gold will play really well with the colors in the middle and I'm probably going to end up moving some of that color to the bottom portion of the painting as well just to make everything more cohesive and more balanced.
I want to add a little bit more of this blackberry color in the top part of my painting, which now looks like the bottom part of my painting. Um, but I wanted to show you which palette that came, that color came from. It's this little palette here, the Decadent Pies palette from Prima Watercolors. It's called Watercolor Confections. And it's one of my favorite little palettes of theirs. It um, has a lot of really beautiful colors and colors that I have used uh, in many different paintings. And I absolutely love this blackberry color. And I also love the blue. I love the apple that's in there. Um, yeah, a lot of really, really nice colors. Actually, that green would have been really nice in this painting too. So I could have probably made this painting just using this palette, in fact. <laughs> But I didn't. Uh, I did, however, want to play with that color because I don't have any other dark blue that I find really rivals this color and I wanted to use it on the top part of my painting. I applied more of that paint and now I'm just kind of spritzing it with water because I want that color to spread at that horizon line and depending on how it spreads, it may actually start to look like distant trees very abstract distant trees but it could be interpreted as distant trees so anyway love this color I love how it works against that cobalt teal light and um, I think it's it fits really well with this painting Because I added that blackberry in the top part of my painting, I want to add some of it also in the bottom part of my painting for balance and also to make the composition uh, more cohesive. I really like how that blackberry has spread at the horizon line and it reminds me of distant trees and so I want to accentuate that by adding some vertical lines with my fine dip black pen. I really like the top two thirds of my painting so far, but I feel like the bottom part of the painting needs a little something to liven it up. So I have pulled out my star gold and I'm adding a few little details that I hope will bring it to life a little bit more. It is sort of reminiscent in an abstract way of, you know, the earth below the soil, which, you know, earth is earth. It's very neutral <laughs> so I don't think you would ever call it exciting but this is a painting it's not meant to be exactly like what I would see underneath the soil and so I, I want to sort of bring a little bit more 
detail to this area to make it a little bit more bright and fun to look at, if you will. But I can't just add star gold in that section. I also am going to add it in other sections as well. Otherwise, it will make the painting look very unbalanced. Sometimes, I would even say most of the time, simple is better. And so I have decided that this little painting is done. It doesn't have anything complicated going on in it. It's all very simple little details, but I like it. I like the way it turned out and it's an abstract little landscape that I could see myself getting lost in dreaming of running in that field. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple little painting project but I learned a ton in creating it and I love how I decided to let myself play and experiment with colors blending colors that I wasn't too sure how well they would blend together and all in all in the end it made for a satisfying little project to create and a fun and beautiful little abstract landscape. I love the fact that I kept everything in this painting very simple, even the application of the watercolor ground. And by keeping it simple, I was still able to create something that ultimately I really, really like. And here it is, proof that even during experimentation and play, we can end up creating something we find really beautiful. Well, at least I find it beautiful. <laughs> Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating! <laughs>